um, adding compression support over the network and possibly tying that in with um, some of the NetFS libraries to make it kind of usable in multiple scenarios. Uh, a, a second part of that would be making sure KSMED on the server side could do this. So Windows and various SMB servers support this idea of compression, and you know Enzo can give you more details if you're curious. Um, it obviously reduces network the size of what you send over the network can help a lot in some workloads. And dynamic adjustment of this, deciding when you want to send a com compressed frame over the wire is great. Um, anyway, this is a common feature in some servers. We don't do it in Linux yet. Uh, discussions with Dave Howells, David Howells about putting this, uh, some of the code in, in, um, in NetFS makes sense. So both KSMED and the client can share it. Um, the algorithms are negotiated. Uh, Linux, I think, supports two, at least two of the algorithms that Windows supports and other servers support commonly that are defined in the protocol specifications. The other topic I wanted to make sure you guys were all aware of is that there's been a huge progress on the Quick driver. So Quick is a huge percentage of network traffic now and growing, right? Um, but it's not used for any kernel things, unlike in other operating systems, right? In other operating systems, Quick is a kernel driver, uh, just like TCP and UDP are. And um, it's extremely helpful for, like SMB, for example, uses this by default for some of the Windows VMs in Azure. Uh, there's multiple third-party servers for SMB that also use this. There are three Red Hat guys that have made great progress. So three, uh, three Red Hat developers made great progress in this. I've run the tests. I gave a presentation. You can go to sambaxp.org. Um, I gave a presentation on this and also on the client updates. Um, but what I was very impressed with their testing, I was very impressed with what they're doing so far. There was great feedback from the Samba guys. The Samba guys in user space would like to leverage this. The only portion of this quick driver in the kernel is performance sensitive reads and writes. The rest of it's handled up in user space. But I think that going forward, Quick has so many advantages for sending you know, file system traffic over the network, right? Obviously, no head of line blocking, congestion control improvements better parallelization, and of course it's secure. So, you know, it's a very exciting time. The parts that I have to change and that KSMBD will have to change are small. Um, but I, I just want to make sure you guys were aware of that because this quick driver could be very, very useful. And they're getting interest from three or four other file system developers and in internal kernel use cases. But SMB is the logical one because you see it already uh, with many of our, you know, Windows and other, other OS. Um, did you want to add anything on the compression or quick or SMB stuff? Because I think we're running out of Hello. time. Uh, yeah. right? uh, about compression, I, 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 might, I had some slides, but I started talking to people here and things were answered. I reducted it and now I don't have anything else. Uh, just that it's the, the main feature that we, I was looking at was to integrate it the compression to so we receive the the compressed packet and then file systems like local file systems that support compression could be flagging the request as in don't decompress it because i'll store it compressed as is so we could avoid a double decompression or compression decompression compression and decompression and Talking to, to Omar on Butterfest with uh, David Dusseldorp as well, and looking at some stuff on BcacheFS, this is going to be a huge work. It's not easy. So I was wondering if anyone has any input on that, if it's worth the trouble, the, the work, the investment, yeah. <laughs> if I should pursue yeah. the such uh, feature. And, and for a little context here, because how other operating systems have handled this is when you have files at rest that can be compressed, you know, Windows supports this, I think probably Macs and other things support this, when you can have files at rest that can be compressed, they had an IOCTL, an S or NFSCTL, that could use, the backup applications could use. So a backup application could copy the raw compressed stuff and that was an option that, that was used in other operating systems to avoid this problem. Well, yeah, on, on Microsoft's demonstration, they showed that Windows to Windows copy with the, the, an SMB compression enabled, they showed like a five to six performance improvement. Yeah. And currently, that's simply not, not possible on Linux. And that's mostly because we don't have such integration with other 
subsystems. So, so ButterFS has uh, an interface, an IOCTL interface, which uh, was a ri we originally tried to get through as a, a PWrite v2 flag at, called RWF encoded. Um, and when the IO was part, read or write IO was passed down the stack with that flag, it wouldn't, you know, you know it was a compressed in, or encrypted extent. Um, that was being read, it would not decrypt it and it would pass it untranslated back up to user space. Those IOCTALs, uh, as I understand it, uh, are still part of, of, of ButterFS. They're used by the send and receive code, if I understand correctly, so that it can just it can move compressed and or encrypted data um, across the network without decrypting it or, or decompressing it. So, and once again, mm -hmm. there's massive performance improvements by leaving it in its original state um, and to you know, roll all the way across to the other end. The only big issue with doing that from something like uh, you know, SIFS or NFS or any of those network file systems onto a local file system is that we have to make sure that they're using the same compression format. Yeah, so, yeah that's, so, you know, that was an issue until March when Microsoft announced that they now support uh, LZ4 on Windows 2025. So that, that's right, a good... Not all file systems that support compression support LZ4. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's still an issue even though they might support that. Um, so yeah. that's something else that is a barrier. There has to be a discovery mechanism yeah. for what compression formats are supported by the local file system <laughs> before it goes and advertises that it can take encoded uh, right. data or yeah, send encoded yeah. data. Just one thing on, on, on the algorithms. And, and remember those thing. can be extended. 